Hello and welcome back. This is our second video now on types of data and measurement scale. Uh, the first video that we produced went through this content uh, in a lot more detail than what I intend to do in this video. I'm going to keep this uh, relatively short uh, for both your benefit and mine, I think. Uh, so let's, uh, let's just get into the uh, first part of the question, part A. Uh, we're looking at how many elements are in this data set. So again, our data set is identified right here. I have all of this information available uh, to analyze. Uh, where did it come from? All of this information is information about uh, universities. In this case, all of the names of those universities are listed in the first column. And so these universities uh, constitute our elements uh, of this data set. So how many universities are there? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and finally 10 elements. So we have information on 10 elements, 10 universities. Uh, part B, how many variables are in this data set and what are they? So again, that variable, that is that unique piece of information that we have for each of our elements. And this particular data set, those variables are across that first row. So here's our variables, our different pieces of information that we have for each element. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and finally I have seven variables in this data set. Uh, what are those variables? All their names are included in that first row. So I have the global rank, country, number of students, number of students per faculty, uh, the percentage of the student population that are international, uh, perhaps one of the most important characteristics, I don't know, the number of female to male students, maybe that's how you want to choose uh, what university you go to, or perhaps equally important, uh, average temperature uh, in, the, in that particular city. So here we have our seven variables uh, and the names of each of them. Okay, part C, what measurement scales uh, are used for each of these variables? I'm just going to clear myself a little bit of space here, otherwise this is going to get so messy so fast. So you may recall our different types of measurement scales. Uh, the most basic is a nominal variable, uh, just a label or a name, right? We have uh, an ordinal variable, uh, has the characteristics of a nominal, plus now the rank matters or the order of individual data points contains some meaning. Uh, an interval variable, so an interval variable now has the characteristics of an ordinal variable, except it must be numeric because the most important characteristic or defining characteristic of an interval is that the difference between any two data points matters. So this one minus this one uh, has some specific meaning and can be measured in some uh, specific unit of measurement. So the interval, uh, the difference has some meaning. The next is a ratio variable. A uh, ratio variable, all the characteristics of an interval, it must also be numeric. And now in addition to that, the ratio, or dividing one variable by another, this one divided by this one, that too has some significance. So we can say, you know, this is twice as much as this, or half as much as this, or three times more than that. Okay, so that ratio has some significance. Uh, similarly for a ratio variable, the number zero exists uh, within that measurement scale uh, and takes on a particular meaning in the sense that if that variable takes on the value of zero for any particular element, it implies that that variable ceases to exist or does not exist uh, for that particular element. Okay, so let's go through each of our seven variables. Uh, the first one here that we'll look at, uh, global rank. So here it's, uh, it's clearly nominal, it's, uh, it's a numeric nominal variable. Uh, is it uh, ordinal? Well, it's sort of given away in the name here. It actually says rank. So yes, this is a ranking. 
uh, of different universities. It's from best to number one to number ten, best to the tenth best, uh, still tenth best in the world is pretty, pretty darn impressive. Uh, is it interval? Well, I can look at a difference, but I, a difference doesn't really have any meaning here. Uh, if I look at 8 minus 5, so that difference is 3. Uh, there's no units tied to that. Uh, all, it, all I can say is that MIT is better than Imperial College. Uh, if I look at 4 and 1, well, that difference is also 3. Uh, but the, the, the magnitude of the difference in quality between these universities doesn't necessarily be the, need to be the same. All I can say is that uh, California Institute of Technology is better than Cambridge, which is better than MIT, which is better than Imperial College of London, uh, all according to Times uh, Higher Education. So that interval really doesn't have any significant meaning. So this first variable uh, is going to be ordinal. The country, is it nominal? Yes. Uh, it's a text, so I know that uh, it's, it has to be either nominal or ordinal. It can't be interval or ratio because those ones have to be numeric. Uh, so it's, it's a nominal variable, is it ordinal? Uh, can they be ranked? I don't think we can rank them on geography. So here we have a uh, nominal variable. Number of students. Well, this one I'm going to say is a ratio variable. It's nominal, it's ordinal. I can rank these universities based on the number of students. I can look at the difference between each university in terms of the number of students. And I can look at the ratio and say, this university has twice as many students as this university, or this one has half as many students as this university, uh, or maybe zero. Uh, maybe a university has zero students. So it satisfies all of the characteristics of a ratio. So too does number of students per faculty. Uh, all the same arguments. This the one university has twice as many students per faculty than, than uh, another university. The difference also has significance. Okay, so uh, number of students per faculty is a ratio variable. International students also a ratio variable for the same reasons. Number of female to male also a ratio variable uh, for all the same reasons. Temperature. Uh, this one's a little bit different. Here I've actually uh, listed this in terms of the Fahrenheit and the Celsius uh, measurement. Uh, both of these happen to be interval scales. Uh, the reason they're interval scales is if we consider a temperature, let, let's think of uh, it's 10 degrees here or it's 20 degrees uh, in some other region. I can't say that 20 degrees is twice as warm uh, as 10 degrees. That, that just doesn't make sense. I can't say that it's 10 degrees warmer just as I can say if it's 40 degrees in one spot and 50 degrees in another, that's also 10 degrees warmer. So the interval has significance, uh, but the ratio has no value. Similarly, if, uh, if I say it's zero degrees, whether it's zero degrees Celsius or zero degrees Fahrenheit, uh, that doesn't mean there's no heat. Uh, zero is just one particular level along that, uh, along that scale. So zero doesn't have any specific meaning. It doesn't mean there's no temperature. It doesn't mean there's no heat. Uh, so in this, in this data set here, and always, temperature is an interval variable. OK, moving on to part D. Uh, so for part D, now we're looking at whether variables here are categorical or quantitative. Uh, as you may recall, any variable that is nominal or ordinal is categorical and any variable that is interval or ratio is quantitative. So looking at uh, our different variables, here I have uh, ordinal and nominal. Those two are both categorical. And here I'll just change colors um, for our quantitative ratio 
all of the ratio variables and the interval, those are all quantitative. Okay, so that answers uh, each part A, B, C, and D of this problem. Uh, I certainly hope this helps you better understand uh, the different types of data and different measurement scales that are used. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.